Hello everybody. Welcome back. I'm Alethea Thomas. Welcome to the channel. Um, if you are interested in books, bookish content, cozy content, all kinds of, you know, book content, then you are in the right place. I am going to film my what I actually read in the month of February 2023. So if you're interested in that, keep keep on watching. So um, I will just get right into it, no preamble or anything like that. So first of all, February was like a really heavy reading month for me. I was surprised at being a short month. I figured, you know, I might get to you know, four books, five books, maybe if I'm lucky. And I wasn't really planning on like stomping through a whole bunch, but I actually did a pretty good job. So um, I did start in February, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I've been reading the Oxford edition and it's really, really good. I feel like that this has been the most readable, easy, easy to read classic. Um, that I have approached lately and I think most of that is credited to the Oxford folks um, taking the translation and then you know working it and you know making it possibly even more readable than it already was so um, it is just interesting it's fabulous you go from the drawing rooms of the Russian aristocracy to the battlefield and there's a lot of, you know, reflection, you know, from the arist aristocratic, you know, like uh, lifestyle and the constant battles that they kind of have to, you know, curry their favor, curry their power within that society. And then also the, the actual battles that happen in the war. And I just think it's... It's fascinating. Um, I have gotten fairly, fairly far into this. I am almost through book one. I think I've got like two chapters left till I'm done with book one. Um, but I will be posting um, another vlog on War and Peace as soon as I finish book one. And part one? Book one, yeah. So as soon as I finish book one, I should be posting another vlog on it just kind of discuss what I've read so far and it has been remarkably good this this I think I said in the first vlog like this is the book that I've wished that I had read for so long I, I was looking for this and just never really knew it existed so glad I'm doing that so that's War and Peace so far not finished but definitely started in February Another book um, in the War and Peace uh, realm of things, just because I wanted some historical context because I find it fascinating. Um, this is the Russia against Napoleon, and it is by uh, Donna McLevin, and, or Levin, Don, Dominic Levin. And it is a really interesting accompaniment to War and Peace. This, this is like the true... The, the actual battles that happened. War and Peace is, of course, the fictionalized version of that, you know, from those particular characters' perspectives. But it is interesting that some of the characters are actually derived from real people. And um, it might not be a true representation of those real people, but the, the real people do exist in this book. And it just kind of goes over the actual battles, the combat, the, um, the, the maps, of the combat and the battles themselves and what occurred like the actual historical facts are all in here so it's really interesting I haven't gotten too far in it because also in War and Peace we've only gone through a couple of battles so far um, what's really cool about this book though is that it does have pictures in it that are really cool um, who the people were you know what they look like Lots of pictures of generals in here. Um, let's see here. And then, you know, what their, what their uniforms look like, the different types of officers. That's all in here. I think it's just really cool. And what they were wearing. 
and then you know some some prints of Napoleon uh, let's see here Napoleon Awards Awards Grenadier oh, sorry Grenadier Lazarin the Legion to Honor at Tils you know and just some other interesting artwork for the time um, is in here so I just think it's it's super cool but anyway interesting stuff I don't know if I'll completely get through it I'm striving to uh, but you know I just it's nice to be able to look at war and peace you know get some information about the battle and then take this find that battle and um, kind of read what actually happened so Anyway, um, that is uh, Russia Against Napoleon. It's what I actually finished up. Uh, one, one book for work, but I'm counting it anyway just because, heck, why not? It's called Information Nation. If you are in um, the records management industry or the information management inf industry or information governance, this is a key book to read. It has um, very good information for running uh, compliance in your business, things like that. Um, no advertisement for this. Of course, I purchased this on my own, but um, it is a really interesting, good, you know, good book to read on that. So I thought I'd just mention it because um, it was very, very readable for a, a work type of book. A lot of things I read for book are more like textbooks and they're so boring, but this was actually pretty good. So anyway, if, if anyone's interested in that, also just uh, message me. Uh, stuff like that and I can help you with uh, information management related topics if you're interested then now that what else I've gotten to um, this month I read Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen this was a collection um, that I had and I went ahead and got the got the audiobook version off of I think it was yeah it was Libby and um, decided to pick up the book that I have and read along with it while I was listening to it. Very Jane Austen. Um, I've read Pride and Prejudice before. Reading uh, Sense and Sensibility, I really just want to read Pride and Prejudice again. It's been a really long time, so I'm kind of thinking I might toss it in uh, to next month in March, but I have a lot of books I need to do in March, but we'll get that to that in the next video. Um, but Sense and Sensibility, classic story, I'd actually listen, not listen to it, I actually watched it before on, um, I think it was like the 1997 version of Sense and Sensibility. It was so good. Um, I'll double check on that. But it was the older, older version. It's got the gal from uh, Bridget Jones' Diary, I think, in it. I don't remember what her name is. But it was super good. Is it very Dome Diary? I don't remember. But um, the actresses in it were very good. And I think Hugh Grant was in it too. If I remember correctly. But I cannot find that movie for the life of me on uh, any of the streaming platforms right now. You have to buy it on Amazon. And I just, I don't really want to buy that movie right now. But anyway, Sense and Sensibility, classic story, uh, classic Jane Austen you know, marry within your circles, you know, you can find love in your own circles, make a sensible match, you know, everything is determined by money, 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 um, and, you know, Jane Austen herself pokes fun at the society and the women that are in it especially, some of them, like, rambling on and on and on and on and on, and just the, the cattiness, the uh, societal just nuances are so hilarious, the chattering old women, the the rumor mill, all of that things, people thinking they saw something and reporting back to everybody else, but then we find out later that wasn't the correct information. You know, it just kind of goes around and gets spread and it's incorrect and everyone gets confused and upset. And, oh no, we're going to fake. Oh, my heart is so upset. It's just, it's all of that stuff in here. Um, I think that this one was printed, it was like the first novel that she had gotten published and probably made her famous. And then after uh, this one was Pride and Prejudice. So anyway, if you have not read Sense and Sensibility, please read it. Um, and it will just make you want to read Pride and Prejudice anymore because 
I do think Pride and Prejudice is a superior book, but I think Emma actually is, is her best book because it's so funny and so picks apart things. And, like society and the expectations on women and stuff like that. So good. But uh, anyway, um, that is Sense and Sensibility. I've had a lot that were not in physical form. I read The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. It was really good. I enjoyed it. I, I don't know if I understand necessarily mental health problems. Candidly, I have had very few struggles in the realm of mental health. I'm generally a very positive, very happy person. I've had a very comfortable life though. I have been fortunate enough to have family that loves me, adores me, um, you know, has been helpful to me my entire life. So that, that may be the difference maker there. I, I don't know for sure. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, people that have mental health problems that it all stems from bad problems people can have mental health issues for all kinds of reasons so you know no judgment no nothing I think it's good to accept you know the issues that you have and work on them as best you can now it seemed like the main character in Sylvia Plath's book was fairly normal when she started out yes I think her father wasn't in the picture like he had died um, and her mother was doing the best that she could in supporting her daughter. And, you know, the character, and I'm forgetting her name right now, um, but she goes to New York for um, a very brief internship sort of situation where the girls, um, this group of girls is housed by this magazine publishing company and they're given clothing, their food, all of this stuff. And they get to kind of experience what working in the big city is like, which is a really, you know, wonderful opportunity, I would think, especially in the time period that this book was in. So she had a great opportunity. She had, you know, a chance to really do something, decide what she wanted to do with her life. Now, I think maybe she was at this you know, this is such a weird age when you're kind of in that college -y, you know, early 20s phase. You don't know what you are, who you're going to be, you know, what you're going to do quite yet. So it's a, it's, it's a fragile time for a lot of people. So I get that. I'm not quite getting how she dove from being fairly calm and behaving normally, I'll say, into the slide into depression, and then ultimately into suicidal thoughts. I'm not understanding. It, it just the ramp up wasn't really there. Now, the, some things happened. And, yeah, I understand some things happened. So people were real jerks to her. You know, uh, the sicknesses happened, all kinds of things. But I, in my personal opinion, I... I wouldn't have let that set me back at all. I would have just gone on with my life and, you know, continued to do what I wanted to do. She seemed to be holding herself back in a lot of ways. And I'm not sure why that is. It's very, very strange. I think her name was Esther, actually, yeah. I should have this prepared beforehand. I completely apologize. Esther Greenwood, that's right. Yeah, I just didn't really get how Esther went from like zero to a hundred <laughs> miles an hour into, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, thought, suicidal thoughts. I don't know how she got there so quickly. It just didn't, it didn't seem, maybe it was the pacing of the novel. It was, you know, it, it seemed like to me something really awful would have had to have happened for her to feel that way. And I, I felt like nothing, nothing really bad actually happened to her. Maybe I'm not getting it. So you guys tell me, am I getting it or am I not getting it? But otherwise, I, I really enjoyed Sylvia Plath's writing. I thought it was a very straightforward writing style. Uh, no, no frills. Um, explanations of things were okay. It just kind of felt um, choppy at times, loose, 
um, and, and not a lot was actually explained. So uh, what was my review? I thought it was very well written, easy to read, and interesting. I feel like the story never really explained anything, and this was to a point where I kind of started getting annoyed by it. So I didn't understand what was pushing the main character into the mental state she ended up in. It, was, it wasn't just one thing, it was a multitude of experiences, but none of them seemed so awful as to drive a person to become mentally ill. Maybe that's just my personal opinion. So that was good. But, you know, if, if you're interested in reading uh, The Bell Jar, I, I think you should read it. I don't think it's the most outstanding novel on the face of the planet. I did give it three stars. But it's definitely worth reading if you want to read it. Or if you're required to read it. But yeah, go ahead and read it. It's great. Then I also got around to listening to Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I liked it, but I'm not sure if I like stream of consciousness rating. I actually got kind of bored during it. Um, it wasn't a terrible story, but the stream of consciousness rating and the thoughts going on in the different characters' head, because it's not just Mrs. Dalloway's head that you're in. The novel starts off in Mrs. Dalloway's head. It does go to other characters at times, which makes, I don't know, sometimes I felt like it was a little jarring to suddenly be in somebody else's head, because you're not. Re it's not really explained that you're, I mean, you're told whose head you're in, but it's very fast feeling. Like, there wasn't a chapter break in between those things. Or, you know, a sectional break of some kind. But anyway, um, you, you're in these different characters' heads, and that's all right. But I just think it's kind of a, a weird, a little weird way of, of writing. And I did find it kind of boring at times, like I said, because they just kind of go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and they're thinking. Where in my head, it's usually like, do this, do that, do this, do that, you know, and I'm on to the next task, and I'm not, you know, having an entire diatribe going on in my head. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else thinks like that, too, but, um, so, anyway, I, I mean, it was an interesting book. I almost, like... I, I, I know I started it, and this was a while back, I started it once, kind of put it down for a while, and then eventually did get back to it um, in uh, last month, and, and went from the start to the finish after that. So, I don't know, it was just kind of, it wasn't difficult to get through, but sh it sure kind of bored me in some places. And I think that if the story had been told maybe a little faster, and the diatribe wasn't so prolonged, it would have been better for me. But I think I gave Mrs. Dalloway, um, again, a three stars, because I didn't think it was like a profound book or anything like that. I think people are fascinated with it because of the writing style. Um, Virginia Woolf is a great writer. I, I enjoyed the writing itself. Um, I enjoyed the use of the English language. But, I don't know, I got bored with it kind of quick. I just didn't, I don't think I like the writing style of this particular book, but I am going to try some other of her books. I don't know if all of her books are in this sort of style or not. Um, this stream of consciousness sort of style, but I'm interested to see if it turns out like To the Lighthouse, which is I think the next book I have by her on my list. Um, if, if To the Lighthouse is like that, I'm probably not going to read it because <laughs> I don't want to deal with another stream of consciousness thing. Um, I don't know. I may give it another try. Stream of Consciousness. Maybe another writer's Stream of Consciousness might be better. I don't know. But we'll see. You guys You guys tell me if you like Stream of Consciousness and who you might suggest I read. So, there is Mrs. Dalloway. Then I also read A Short History of Russia. How the world's largest country invented itself from the pagans to Putin. This was a really, really good short history of Russia, and it was only about six hours, I think, to listen to, so it was, it was fairly short, and it was a very um, informative read, for sure. It told me, like, exactly what I needed to know going into War and Peace, 
because I honestly didn't know very much about Russia at all or Russian history. Um, now, I knew about um, Catherine the Great, some of her reign, and a little bit about um, the czars of Russia um, after Catherine the Great. And I knew about Catherine the Great's son. And so a little bit of that dynastic stuff. But I didn't know anything prior to that at all. So I do think it was really interesting to listen to that and to understand it. And it, Russian history is very interesting. Um, the funny thing is that really not much has changed from the very beginning of Russia to up till now. Um, the economics in Russia have always been the elite and the powerful own just about everything. And then everybody else hardly has anything and they're just kind of scraping by and it's always been like that and it hasn't gone through an evolution like say london or france yeah, i'm sorry not london england or france because you know those those areas had feudal systems but there was this evolution out of the feudal system and into you know persons other than the elite having the ability to own property and to, you know, have freedom to do as they chose to do with their time and their money and, you know, all of that. So I just think it's, it's fascinating how Russia is still so, so similar to how it was from the beginning. Different in many ways, but still like fundamentally similar to how it had been in the past. So Anyway, if uh, that is of interest to you at all, it's A Short History of Russia, and it's by Mark Gal Gal Galeotti. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Galeotti. Um, so read that if, if Russian history is of interest to you at all, and uh, you just want something really short, because it was great. I got to so many books in February, man. So uh, the next one I got to was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and this was a very short book. It was only 163 pages, and I was interested in reading it because I saw something about it on, I think, Goodreads, or maybe it was uh, YouTube or something, but I was interested in reading something, uh, a Japanese, and this one popped up, and it just caught my eye. And I was like, oh, you know, maybe, because I love Japanese writing. I like, um, you know, the Japanese kind of uh, cultural things. I like slice of life, sort of, um, you know, the, the look at the lives of ja normal Japanese people, like especially today. Uh, Japanese modern culture is very interesting to me. I'd love to go visit sometime. I think it's just fascinating. But Convenience Store Woman was really, really cool. It was such an interesting look at current Japanese society and their expectations of, you know, the young people and how you are supposed to be in society. The protagonist of this book was Keiko Furu, and I can't ever pronounce it, is Keiko Furukura. And Keiko kind of was, I want to say she was just kind of a little off, a little slower than the rest of her peer group. Um, the, the novel begins by explaining that she was just kind of a little bit different than everybody else. Um, she wasn't really affected emotionally by a lot of things that, you know, most normal people are. And she needed a lot of structure in order to feel like she fit in to the world um, and was able to kind of function effectively. So, she goes along in school and one day she decides that, oh, she really could use a job and um, start working somewhere because I think she was getting like to the end of high school or something and people were going to go off to school and, and do all of this stuff. Well, she decides to get a job at a convenience store because she really liked convenience stores. Well, then what ends up happening is she's at the convenience store for 18 years. People are a little put off by this. Her parents 
think some, you know, and, and while they've kind of known her her whole life, they think it's like time for her to move on. She really needs to, you know, be out in the real world, get a real job, you know, not continue to, um, to work part time at this convenience store. She does live on her own in her own apartment. And she's also really like strongly being pushed by those societal pressures, her parents, her sister, friends that she's known, all of those people to like get a boyfriend and get married or, you know, do something other than work at this convenience store. But she loves the convenience store. She loves the simplicity of it. She loves the uh, structure of the convenience store. She likes the, you know, the corporate aspects of it, you know, the, uh, we have, we have to follow the manual. The manual is your Bible. You know, the, you follow the manual to the T. So she's there for so long and she like experiences a rotating cast of characters, multiple managers, multiple, you know, different, uh, employees that she works with, but she is always the same and she always works at the convenience store and it is her life. And she has to, you know, hear the hum of the convenience store and the noises in there to feel comfortable and to be calm. So, um, like her comfort was of, is of no concern to society at large because there's something wrong with her. So anyway, I, I won't tell you how it all resolves itself. I won't tell you everything about the book, but that's just kind of what to know. It's really interesting, and I do suggest people read it because it's it's just really cool. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the writing style. The translation was really good from Japanese to English, um, and it's also um, talks a lot about life in Japan currently. So if any of that interests you, please go and pick up a Convenience Store Woman. And then let's see, Blue Beard by Kurt Vonnegut was the next book that I read. I finished up really early in February though because I was almost done with it in um, in Janu January. Yeah, in January. I think I went ahead and explained a lot of it in the last video what I read in January, so I won't really touch on it too much though. It's it's good Kurt Vonnegut book. The main character of this novel was in Slaughterhouse Five. And um, it's just kind of like his life uh, as an artist from the beginning to the to the near end, and um, just a really good Vonnegut read. Essential, I think, essential Vonnegut. I don't know if it's my favorite Vonnegut. I'm thinking that um, the Sirens of Titan is still my favorite Vonnegut because it's just so sci-fi, and I love sci-fi. So anyway, that was Bluebeard. I won't, like I said, go into too much detail on that. Then the last one that I finally finished up because, oh my gosh, it took me forever to get through because this is smut corner stuff. Um, and it was because I had so many other things going on. I didn't have time to touch it. And I just wanted to get through this whole trilogy series um, just, just to finish it. So this was um, A Touch of Malice by Scarlet St. Clair. And the whole trilogy, it's okay. The smut is excellent. I have nothing to complain about about the smut. Characters are kind of annoying, though. Characters are so stereotypical and in some cases just are dumb. <laughs> just really dumb. But it's a, good, it's a good fun read. It's fine. It's not difficult to read whatsoever. It's just, you know, just something to listen to if you have nothing better to listen to and you just kind of want your brain to go Bleh, for a little bit. It does, I will give her credit for this, it does end on a cliffhanger. So, you gotta read probably the next trilogy to figure out what happens and I don't know what it is yet, uh, the next trilogy, if it's even been written yet, I have no idea. So I will uh, find that out later because I will probably read more by Scarlet St. Clair for sure. And I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say on that. It was a long February, actually. Very long. Got through a lot of books. Tons of books. Um, so not only am I, you know, reading all of these books and, you know, reading books for work too, but um, I'm also reading this because I've got a test I have to take pretty soon. And I wanted to read it because someone suggested this one. But um, 
I mean, I'm also studying for uh, a test I have to take, a really difficult test that I actually have to pay for. Um, so, you know, it's it's been a very busy month. My brain is just absorbing, absorbing, absorbing all of this written material, and I am I'm so proud of myself right now. I don't know, maybe that's just silly for me to say, but I'm just really proud of myself for, for everything that I've written, and, or for everything that I've read so far. And, um... It's been a great month. I have no complaints. February is usually the worst month in the world for me because it's so cold. And I don't really like the cold too much. But reading all this month has actually kept my brain so busy. I don't think I've had much to complain about at all. But, uh, yeah. It's just been a great. It's been a great couple of months. It's been a really, really good. I haven't had any down times. I haven't, um, you know, felt uh, too awful about anything. I, I haven't gotten a little bit depressed about anything because I do have my slumps every once in a while. Um, and I just, I'm excited to keep on reading. So my next video will be what I am going to read in the month of March. So I hope you guys uh, watch that and enjoy it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. I'm going to try and post that up as quick as I can here. Um, after I get this one up. So, bye!